Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about creating an isolated test network for your server testing or computer testing. So when you create a computer lab, it's good to have an isolated network because when you're on the same network, you can screw things up. If you have your business network and you're running tests and all of a sudden there's another DHCP server or DNS server and people are looking at the wrong places, you can just break stuff, mess up people's productivity, mess up their internet usage, accidentally connect to the wrong domain and break things or anything. Like it can just lead to a big mess. So to do this, what you're going to want to do, like your normal network would look like, say that's your router, here's the internet, and then out to your computers. So what you're going to want to do is actually isolate something away from these so it can't access any of them and these can't access any of that. So therefore you've got your little test network here doing its own thing and these are able to connect to each other, but they cannot connect past this line. So what you're going to want to do is let's just break this out to what goes on. Is let's say you wanted to do it at home, which more than likely you're going to be doing this if you're testing things. Your network's probably going to look like this. You're going to have a router and you're going to have your maybe your iPhone and your computer and another computer over here. So what you're going to want to do is get a second router and actually have this router forward everything through that router and out to the internet. So then anything connected to this router cannot actually connect to them. All it sees is here. So let's say your home network is 192.x.x.x and you are going to want your internal network to be totally different. So let's say 10.x.x.x so now, as you see, this is a 10 network. This one's a 192 network. Even if they do somehow clash, like if you put a 192 network, it's not going to be able to do anything on here. So that's that. Now to set this up on this router, you're going to set one interface to be 10.0. Dot zero dot one and then that's its internal interface the external interface so this will be the interface that connects to your network might be one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot ten and let's say your router is one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one so now anything on this network say you've got a server over here and now that's ten dot zero dot zero dot ten this is actually how my server's set up as well so ten dot zero dot zero dot ten that's your server its default gateway is 10.0.0.1. So what it thinks to get to the internet, it needs to go to 10.0.0.1. And it doesn't see any of this stuff, 192. What happens is the router using a thing called NAT will translate the address, which is, um, I think it's National Address Translation or something. I can't remember what the N stands for. So um, it will translate the address from here 
So 192.168, say it's going to Google. It'll go, oh, I need to go to 10.0.0.1, and then the router will forward it through to this router, which will then forward it through to the internet. Say Google. That you wanted to browse. So this thing just thinks it goes to that and it goes out to the internet. It doesn't see what happens here, so it can't access any of this. So you've got your own little silo here that is your test network. Now that will save you a lot of drama because you can just turn it all off. None of this stuff's affecting any of that stuff. So none of this even has anything to do with any of that. This is totally siloed off. So these computers can see this. 192.168.0.1 but it doesn't see anything in the 10 network so to create your um, lab virtual network using Hyper-V you're going to need to create a virtual switch for the private network and also a virtual switch for your actual normal network that connects to the internet. So this is running Hyper-V just on Windows 10. And once you start that, you'll have this virtual switch manager. So we've already got an external network here. We're gonna create, a, so that's the one that goes out to the router. So just your normal network that's on your computer. This external network, it's connected to that. We're gonna create a new private network for use in our computer lab. So let's go test lab, and it's a private network, apply. Then we're going to need a new virtual machine to do the actual routing. So I'm going to use a server 2012 uh, R2. Let's go test router server. And this is going to run RRAS for routing um, from the internal to external. So see that connection external. Next. Needs a hard drive. Only going to need 60 gig. And we're going to want to use an ISO image of a server. If you don't know how to install server, uh, check out my other videos on how to install Windows Server. And then finish. There we go. So I'll just install server now and I'll come back when that's finished. So now I've got this virtual machine set up, just installed with a fresh operating system. We're going to want to go into the Hyper-V settings and we're going to need to add a new network adapter. So we want to add that to the test lab. And now the test lab one is the private one. And we've already got the network adapter external. So if we hit apply, start our new virtual machine. Might eject the CD out of there so it doesn't annoy us. And so if we take a look at our um, IP address configuration now, by opening the command prompt and typing in ipconfig. You'll see that this is our outside network adapter and we've got that IP address and the default gateway, which is the actual router on my computer, or not on my computer, but the router that is my normal network. And the IP address there, that's on the normal network as well. Then this is a private network. Because it hasn't got DHCP enabled on it, or no DHCP server on there, 
it's got this 169 address, 169.254, which is what's called an AP per address, which it just gives itself when it can't get a network connection. So we're going to want to go into here, go change adapter settings, and we're going to want to set this to a static IP by double clicking on IP version 4 and using obtain the following, use the following IP address. So we want to use 10.0.0.1255.255.255.0.10.0.0. Oh, we don't want a default gateway. This one's not going to have a default gateway. And it's not going to have a DNS server. Actually, we'll set the DNS server to itself. And hit OK. So now if we run ipconfig again, you see that the IP address is now 10.0.0.1. So now we've got our server with two network connections. So you see now we've got our external router and our virtual switch there and another virtual switch here and we've got our server so this server is now connected to both virtual switches So this one's the external switch, which is connected to the router, and this one's the private switch. This one's got 192 dot whatever, and this one's got 10 dot whatever. So that's what our network looks like currently. So now back in the virtual machine, you can see the two network adapters. So what we're going to need to do, because currently now whatever's on this network cannot connect to this network, and whatever's on this network cannot connect to that network. So what we're going to need to do is install the routing and remote access features. So to do this, you open the Add Roles and Features wizard, click Next, and select role-based or feature-based installation. Select the server that we're on, and this is the server here that we're on now. And we're going to need the remote access role. And select next. And select next. Then in here, we're going to want to enable routing and add all the features associated with it then select next leave iis as default and restart the server if necessary and hit install So now you'll see that's finished. So I've hit close. There'll be this little notifications wizard. And then it says that you need configuration for direct access and VPN or RAS to be to actually make it work. So you can see that it's installed by going down here and you'll see that you've now got remote access and routing and remote access. So I'm going to pin that to the start menu. And in here, hit the Open Getting Started wizard. So you see you've got this stuff here. We don't want any of that. We don't want direct access or VPN. So we'll close that. And we'll open Routing and Remote Access. So when you click there, it says Set Up Routing and Remote Access. So if you right-click on the server name and say Configure and Enable, 
and we want to enable NAT. So hit next, and then you pick which side you want to enable to connect to the internet, which will be the Ethernet interface, which you see the IP address, that's the external IP address. Select the outside network, finish. So now, if you expand out IPv4 and go to NAT, you should see that all of that is mapped. Ethernet 2 is mapped, and see that's marked as the private, and Ethernet is marked as the public. So now, if we go back to here, anything that connects to here, so let's say we add another computer in, It will connect to the switch, go to the server, and be able to go straight out to the internet. So now this part here is isolated from the network, and that is the part that you use for your computer lab. So to do that, you just need to make sure that you're on the same virtual switch as that. So in here, in settings, virtual network adapter, see that, the test lab. So on another machine, if you set so on another machine if you set the network adapter to be test lab they'll both be on the same internal network and isolated for from your normal network in your lab environment